Hi, 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 this is Bernie here again from sunny San Diego. What's up, guys? Um, this is our latest Freedom Cast, and this time it's about tips and tricks for the Ansel command line. So for those of you who haven't heard of Ansel, check out Ansel.com, as you see here. Um, Ansel is basically a virtualization platform that allows you to run your own virtualization lab and um, the cool thing is it's not only real virtual machines um, optionally you can also run bare metal containers which are so much more efficient and help you to get the best out of your hardware and also we have so many features that make life easier for you you can do instant snapshots you have a, a, a list of predefined templates you can create your own templates so it's so quick and easy to spin up your virtualized environment and tear it down again, spin it up again, things like that, Ansel.com. Um, our software is uh, Antman, which is the easy to use GUI to manage all your, all your VMs in your lab and it can be a cluster um, or it can just be a single uh, server. So check it all out. We also have appliances, that is servers that come pre-installed with our software. Um, so you find all that on Ansel.com. So with um, the command line, so I'm logging into um, one of our appliances named Daffodil, which is um, actually an Ansel Nano. It's Raspberry um, 4 based. Um, I'm logged in now into Daffodil and as you see here in the warning, the command line is just provided for read purposes only. All payloads should run in your antlets. So our antlets, those are VMs or bare metal containers, and you should never run any payroll in Edge Linux itself. And um, if you make any changes to to Edge Linux itself, you do like yum update or yum install some things, um, because Azure Linux is based off of CentOS, um, CentOS 7. So we can only provide support if you leave it untouched. And your playground to do anything is inside your antlets, which are the virtual servers or bare metal containers. So there you do everything, but you have your Azure Linux itself um, as, as your um, command line interface, you have full root access. We just urge you to just do read operations here. So first of all, let's see um, what shell we have here. Um, so there's a simple command called echo dollar shell, and it gives us a ZSH. So that means mm, Edge Linux is based on the Z shell. Um, the Z shell is very cool stuff. It's compatible to bash um, to the, the born again shell that you might be used to, um, but it has a bunch of cool features um, that that bash doesn't have so we highly recommend using the Z shell and if you need to know more just google it google ZSH versus bash or something like that and um, we hope you'll love it too and actually we um, we're convinced that you love the Z shell too so um, here we go um, of course you can say all the things like print working directory, you can do your ls command. Um, actually, let's remove that file using rm. Um, what else do we wanna do? Um, we want to know what CentOS release this Edge Linux is based on. So we can just do um, this here, cat etc CentOS release. So we see it's based off of uh, CentOS 7.8.2003. Um, what else can we do? We can, um, we can work with the ZFS and the zpool commands. So if you haven't heard of ZFS, it's called Zettabyte File System. It has been developed a long time ago by Sun Microsystem. Uh, Sun Microsystems, which later got acquired by Oracle. Um, it was originally written for Sun's operating system, Solaris, um, but today it's also available for FreeBSD and for Linux. So we're using ZFS on Linux here. 
And why are we using the ZFS file system? Well, it has many cool features. Um, for example, you can create new sub file systems on the fly. You can pool your physical devices, can do some mirroring, um, software RAID type of things. And um, you can clone file systems. You can take snapshots and bookmarks and everything. So in order to have a tool that's really versatile and you know, quick to use to, as I said, easily spin up your environments, tear them down again, stuff like that. Um, ZFS is a great basis. And we're using ZFS just under the hood. So if you use our graphical um, um, dashboard, Antman, so our, our private cloud manager, um, then, then you don't need to know that actually we're using ZFS under the hood. But this video is about command line tips and tricks. So yeah, you can use the ZFS command to, uh, to see what's going on. So we could say ZFS list, and that gives us all the ZFS file systems um, that you see here. And um, for example, you see a lot of um, file systems and, and you know, all the, all the file systems here start with, with antlets, right? So um, we just have one pool, uh, the so-called Z pool named antlets where all our ZFS file systems live in. And then under antlets, we have underscore Docker so we have a few Docker containers that we're running on this machine. Um, we have antlets underscore templates. That's where our templates are running on. And we see that on this specific device, we have three templates pre-installed, Ubuntu 18.04, Debian 10, uh, Ra and Raspbian. Um, and then also we have a few antlets that are there. You see that antlets bunt or bunt, whatever. And, uh, it's actually Bunt. I named it German, the German way for colorful. And then there is Atlas Rust. That's my uh, playground to learn the programming language Rust. Um, so yeah, you see all that here. And um, let's do ZFS list and pipe it into the less command. So that way we see the column headings there. Um, we see used, available, and refer. So with, uh, let's say the Raspbian in the bottom of the screen, um, it uses 1.24 gigabytes. Um, available is 77 gigabytes. And the refer is 1.2 as well. Um, the refer is actually what's actually being used on the disk. So with some of them, there can be less usage on the disk um, rather than the, the used. And that is because ZFS can save you a lot of space because it only duplicates stuff when actually needed. It's called copy on write. So as long as you know you duplicate stuff and it stays the same, it will not duplicate things. And that is actually a great advantage for the Ansel platform. If you, for example, have a Windows template and then you create seven Windows instances, all the gigabytes and gigabytes of the seven Windows instances are not copied. <laughs> they, 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 you know, they only take up the space once and will be shared among those seven instances. And then if any of the seven instances does some writes and changes stuff, then things will be copied. That's why it's called copy on write. Um, but the things that you don't overwrite and most of the core Windows things you'll never overwrite because it's the system stuff, it'll automatically be shared um, without any performance penalty. So that is actually cool stuff and it's all possible um, because of ZFS. Um, there's also the zpool command, so we could say zpool list. So that gives us the only ZFS pool that we have installed on this machine. Its name is antlets, uh, size is 99 gigabytes, and uh, we see 80 of those are still free. We only have 2% fragmentation. It's at 18% capacity. Uh, we're not running automatic deduplication here, so the dedupe factor is just 1.00. Um, 
in the health is online, so everything's great. There's also the Z pool um, status, which gives us some more health status. So we see what device it's actually um, living on. It's, day, it's, it's online, there's no known data errors, things like that. So if you want to know more about ZFS, just hit the man ZFS, man for manual, for the ZFS command. And this is a very long man page and you will learn everything about ZFS just by reading that manual page. Um, the other important command is called, and by the way, oh, we can say uname uh, dash A. Uname is just the name of the Unix system. Um, we see here it's a Linux 4.19. And uh, we see it's for the ARM64 architecture because we're running on a Raspberry Pi 4 here, um, AKA the Ansel Nano. <laughs> um, so now if we want to, the, the cool thing about uh, the Z shell here is if we want to run, um, for example, the Z pool command again, we just need to type the letter Z and then the arrow up and the arrow up will automatically give us the last command that we typed up there that starts in that Z that I typed, and that is Z pool status. So once you get used to that, you don't want to go back, right? So I could say U and then up arrow, and it gives me the U name dash A. So um, that's one of the reasons, one of the simpler reasons we opted for the Z shell here, uh, which is way better than bash. All right, the last command I want to show you is called versh, the virtualization shell. So we could say versh list dash all, and then we see all the virtual machines um, that are available on this machine. Both of them are shut off at this point in time. Um, it's Bunt and it's Kali. Um, so, but these are only the real VMs, the so-called KVM based ones. Um, that run with with you know full blown virtualization. If we want to see the instances with the bare metal containers, we just use this prefix, versh c, and then lxe colon slash slash slash, and that gives us only the lxe aka bare metal containers. And then we say again list dash dash all, and then we get all the uh, all the LXC antlets, um, that is all the bare metal containers here. There's also verse start, verse stop, and all these type of things. Um, and again, you just hit man, verse, and you learn everything about that virtual shell. So you can control everything um, via the command line. But obviously we recommend using Antman, um, which is the GUI that makes your life so much easier. And if you need to run anything automated, Ant-Man has a full API. So we have 100% coverage of all of Ant-Man's functionality using the API. The API is open API compatible. It works with Terraform. So you can literally automate everything um, using Ant-Man. So this was my quick introduction into the command line of Edge Linux and Ant-Man uh, with, within the Ansel platform. Uh, remember, it's only for read access, otherwise um, we can't uh, give you support, which should be clear, right? If we don't, if we don't know about your environment, we, we really can't, can't help. Um, but we're updating it on a regular basis, so you get all the updates from us. And um, thanks for watching this little video and see you next time. Bye.